James, I know it's a step lower than you finished last year, but how excited are you to have another strong finish here in your hometown? And, and how has the city Im continued to embrace you throughout the years? Yeah, I mean, honestly, given the day that we had, um, I'm thrilled with fourth place. We, you know, we got shuffled back on the start there and uh, spent the whole first in stuck by Marco. We had, you know, way more pace, just couldn't get by him and burned a lot of push to pass trying. So it was just looking worse and worse. And then on that, you know, one restart where everything kind of went sideways, um, going through turn two, Takuma just decided to put me in the wall. So I actually bent uh, my left front toe link. And uh, from there on out, it was a real struggle. You know, the car really changed. And, you know, there's nothing you can do in a pit stop to fix that. So we were kind of battling uh, an ill-handling race car. But once the tires got up to temp and I learned sort of where it was going loose and where it was pushing based on, uh, on the bend, we could kind of drive around it. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. And, you know, the aero car was good, all things considered. We had great pace in that last stint and, you know, able to keep Charlie behind us. So uh, top five today, given everything that we had to fight through, is, is tremendous. Obviously very happy for Robbie to be up on the podium. Um, two SPM cars in the top five here. Given the weekend we had, we've, it's, we've been pretty average all weekend, to be honest, and we thought we had a little more for the race, and, uh, and ultimately that was the case. So proud of the boys. I know that no IndyCar race is ever easy, but it seems like this one was even more exceptionally physical. What were the conditions like out there? It was tough. I mean, it's so uh, it's so bumpy. It was very, very hot. That makes the track greasy. You're sliding around a lot. You're catching the car a lot. And then obviously once we bend the car, I mean, it's, it's just so much, it's even less forgiving than it already is around here. So for us, you know, mentally taxing, physically taxing, um, definitely gonna need a few more bottles of water before, uh, before we get into the celebratory drinks tonight. Can you can you elaborate a little more on, on how excited you are for your teammate Robert coming into his first Honda Indy Toronto and getting the finish that he did? Yeah, I mean, obviously we uh, we came in here with high hopes and um, you know we've had back-to-back -back podiums as, as a team the last two years and kind of keep that run going is great. And you know, Robbie's been doing a great job all season, obviously, and um, he managed to kind of stay out of trouble on those restarts. And you know, we both sort of capitalized from other guys having, uh, having bad days today. And, Kept kept ourselves relatively out of trouble, him less than me, and you know that's why he finished up uh, a position ahead. It's it's a shame if the car had been bent, it would have been fun to be up there racing with him and, and Simon and see where uh, where we were at and if we could add three podiums in a row. I know that the race is just finished, but once this weekend is over, just historically for you, do you ever just kind of go, oh my gosh, it's over, just because of all the energy, all the people, the sponsor visits, the family visits, all that? Yeah, no doubt. I mean. This race is, you know, it's obviously one of my favorite of the year. I, I love coming home and, you know, the support that uh, that this city gives, you know, Robbie and myself and the team is just incredible. And, you know, we're really lucky to get to come here and race in our backyard. A lot of guys don't get the chance to do that. So it's it's awesome to come home and, you know, to go through all the extra stuff that, that goes with being at home is obviously a lot harder. Um, this week's very busy for us both. And, you know, we came straight from Iowa and had stuff all week long. And, yeah, I, I like taking the week uh, next week off after this race, and that's what I'll be doing. I'll be going up to the cottage, shutting off the cell phone, and see you guys all in Mid Ohio. <laughs> Questions for James? Yes, and we do have a microphone at the side of the room. Uh, James. This has been obviously Robert's first trip to this track, and you've been here plenty of times now. What advice did you give him going into the weekend and during the weekend? Because we saw a lot of improvement from him and you as well. Yeah, I mean, our, our setup's so good because we really push each other, and um, every track that we're going to, you know, a lot of them Robbie's going to the, for the first time, a lot of them he's going to for the first time in a decade. So uh, we sit down every weekend, and, you know, we go over notes and go over video, and he picks my brain a bit, and. Um, you know, the, the, the big challenge of this track is just, you know, really the, the bumps and the multiple surface changes and, you know, getting him to understand that there's no such thing as a car that feels great over an entire lap here at Toronto. You need kind of a pretty okay car everywhere. If it's really good somewhere, it's going to suck somewhere else. So having sort of a meh car is actually a good thing. Um, but obviously, I mean, like we've seen all year, every position and every situation he's been put into, he's handled like a, like a veteran. So it was no different here this weekend. And uh, like I said, happy for him to get a uh, podium here at home. Other questions for James? Yes, in the front. Would you mind waiting for the microphone? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So uh, you started in ninth, but then you got up to fourth, which I, I like personally. I think if I ever did that, that would be amazing. <laughs> and like, don't you think that that's great? Because like, what was it that you did that was different to? Like, 
make that accomplishment and get a lot better. Well, I mean, one of the big things we did different from other guys was not hit the wall too hard. <laughs> um, obviously, some guys had some problems, but no, you're right. Coming up from ninth to fourth is a is a great result, and I think uh, any frustration we feel just is from you know knowing that have we not damaged the car on that restart, we might have been able to fight a little bit further up and get even you know further up the grid. So it's still uh, still a result we can be proud of, and you know certainly on a day when a lot of other guys had a bad day, you know we managed to salvage a pretty good result, and uh, and that's that's important in the long run. Yes, sir. Uh, James, you've been doing the Honda Indy here for a few years now. Um, I'm not sure about you, but walking around the track this weekend, it just seemed to be a lot more energy with the crowd. I think attendance was really good today. I'm just wondering if you could comment on how the race has grown since you started and how it felt this year as a driver. I mean, for me, it's it's incredible to see the growth over the last few years, especially. You know, I think Jeff Atkinson and the team at the Honda Indy Toronto does an incredible job year in and year out of, of finding ways to kind of grow this event. And the city of Toronto really gets behind it, which is great. The fans are turning out, which is great. And, you know, I think now having uh, three Canadians, you know, in the race, uh, obviously both Robbie and myself kind of from the area, certainly helps the cause. And the fact we've been running well helps the cause. So there's a lot of factors. But at the end of the day, you know, these, these races are, are won and lost by the promoters and everybody at Savory Green and, like I said, Jeff Atkinson and his team have, uh, have really focused on trying to improve the fan experience here. And I think everybody that comes here leaves with, uh, you know, a positive, positive experience over the weekend and fun for the whole family. And at the end of the day, we put on a hell of a show on Sunday, and that's what it's all about. Yes, Patrick, and, and yes, sir. James, uh, especially considering the first, how the first lap went, did you, do you feel like sometimes you're playing defense early on instead of playing, being able to attack on your own and, and, and play offense um, on the racetrack? I mean, it's it's one of those things on lap one, you're, you're trying to do both as best you can. You know, obviously everybody's stacked up. You're trying to take advantage of any mistakes that you can. And, you know, I try to take advantage of, uh, of Simon going wide in turn three there. That's what let Robbie get by me at the start. So, you know, you're, you're trying to be offensive because that's the best time to make uh, make mistakes. But ultimately, you can leave yourself vulnerable, which is what happened to us today. So it's it's the uh, it's the risk you take. It's kind of a balance as best you can on uh, on the starts and restarts. Yes, sir. Hey, James. Um, I know you kind of mentioned it already, but I'm going to ask you again, though, about the heat. How much did that affect you mentally, physically, and also how did it affect your tires? Did it change up your plan as it got hotter here at the, in Toronto? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely affects the tires. It didn't change our plan in terms of our tire strategy, but certainly as the track temperatures go up, the excuse me, the oils come up a little bit more, the tires get a little hotter, they slip and slide a little more, and the more you slide, the higher the temperatures get again, and it's sort of, uh, sort of a vicious cycle. So you have to take care of them a little bit better when the track gets this hot. And then from inside the car, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's incredibly physically taxing when you, know, you start getting dehydrated at the end of the race. And uh, I probably drank more of my water bottle inside the car than I have in any race, because I normally don't drink it that much. But I knew I wanted to try and stay ahead of it and, and not worry about it at the end of the race. And um, those last 10 laps, you know, it was getting hot, it was getting dry mouth, ready to, uh, ready to get a nice cold bottle of water. But I think if you prepare for it, you know, it's manageable. And, uh, and yeah, but for sure today was tough. Any final questions for James? Yes, Norris, in the front. Okay, I'll yell it out. We're, we have a transcript coming, if you wouldn't mind just waiting for the microphone. Thank you. Okay, sorry. No, no problem. Thanks. Um, Dixon called this a physical race. I don't know, you mentioned the little contact with Takuma that created a problem for you. Watching it, it was really a rough race. Is IndyCar getting, are, are IndyCar drivers riding, uh, racing harder than maybe in your experience, or was this just one of those things in this race? Uh, I mean, I think this track's kind of, uh, it kind of lends itself to that sort of behavior anyway. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the series is getting more and more competitive every year. Uh, teams are closing gaps on other teams. The quality of driver across the field is, is going up. And so to make a move, sometimes you have to be a little bit more aggressive than you did in years past. So I, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, I think the, the level of, uh, of aggression in the series is going up as the level of competition goes up. Uh, but certainly, you know, this, this track is no stranger to contact and, and rubbing sideways, front to back, whatever it is. So I think it's a little bit of a combination of everything. Any final questions for James? Yes. James, do you know how much you're loved? 
<laughs> um, by whom? Everybody. Oh, well. Everywhere we walk, throughout the entire uh, field, everywhere, um, everyone admires you so much. Well, that's that's very kind of you to say. I'm uh, I'm very very fortunate, you know, to be in the position that I'm in, getting to race any cars for a living and getting to travel around the world uh, doing this and, and meeting great people and great fans and uh, you know I'm I'm one of the guys that tries to not take that you know for granted and uh, really appreciate the position that I'm in and, and enjoy every minute of it and and I try to share that with the fans as best I can. Before I was a driver, I was the kid with a, a hero card and a sharpie, you know, chasing Greg and, and Mario and Michael and and on Jimmy and Alex and all those. Guys guys around the paddock and so for me to be on the other side of it now is, is a huge privilege and um, giving back as best I can and, and trying to share the experience with as many people as I can is, is what I love doing and it's what I'm going to continue to do so I'm glad people are enjoying it. James thank you very much for your time. Thanks I appreciate everyone. You. Take care.